Yo, what's good YouTube? In today's lesson, we're going to learn a simple data structure that will help us make our code more efficient. This data structure is no other than a dictionary slash hash table. You've probably seen many memes about this, but this is a super powerful data structure. And I failed my first few technical interviews because I didn't know this data structure. So make sure to pay attention because this data structure can probably help you land that job. First off, a dictionary is a data structure that maps keys to values. We talked about this very early on in the bootcamp series, where we basically associated a price to an item inside a menu, where basically the menu item is the key and the price is the value. So I've created a simple dictionary here to reflect a menu with three items, burger, fries, and soda. And to access the price for an item, all we have to do is type menu, open the square brackets, and enter the name of the item that we want to get the price for. So in this case, let's get burger. So let's print this value out and now let's hit run. And as you can see, we got five, which matches up with the burger. So what makes a dictionary so powerful is that to access an item inside the menu, the runtime is big O of one, which is basically constant. And that is super fast. And in general, a dictionary is usually used to store some values that we want to use in the future. For example, the interview question that I failed, I got asked to count the unique number of words inside a list. So at that time, I was still learning how to code and I didn't even know about dictionaries. And I gave a really naive solution where I basically create two lists, one to keep track of the words that I've seen and also one to keep track of the count. So when I came across a word, I would add it to the seen words list and then I would get the index and add it to the words counter. So this solution worked. And the major problem with the solution is that I would always have to search through the seen words to find the word so I could find the index to update the words counter. As you can imagine, each search takes O of N time and we had to do this for each word. So we're basically doing a for loop, which is O of N time. So basically the runtime of this algorithm is O of N squared, which is pretty slow. But instead with the dictionary, we can get rid of this whole searching process. All we have to do is get the word and default it to zero if we haven't seen that word and then add one to it to update the count. And then basically for that word, we just update the dictionary. And the runtime of this is only O of N, where basically we're just looping through each word. And if you remember, getting a value from a dictionary is just O of one. So there you go. By using a dictionary, we reduce our runtime from O N squared all the way to O of N. However, there's one caveat here where we're basically creating extra space just to store these words. So in this case, this dictionary would have n words in total, where n is basically the total number of words inside this list. So in general, when we talk about data structures and algorithms, we care about the runtime and also the space complexity, which is how much space is used. In most cases, there are trade-offs. But in general, bringing down a runtime from big O of n squared down to big O of n is worth the extra space usage. Now that you learned how to use a dictionary, do you think you can use this knowledge to solve the previous lesson's problem and bring the runtime down from big O of n log n to big O of n? Feel free to take a few minutes and think about this. Cool, so now to solve this problem, we actually don't even need to sort anymore. Instead, all we need to do is just create a dictionary to help us keep track of whether we've seen a value before. So if the target is 11, all we have to do is loop through the list and for each number, we have to calculate the difference and check whether that value exists in our dictionary. If the value doesn't exist, then all we have to do is just add it to the dictionary. So first we see five. So 11 subtract five will give us six. So in our dictionary, we wanna store the difference, which is six, and then we wanna store the value five. So that way we know which value subtracted by 11 will give us six, and then we continue. So next we see four, so 11 subtract four will give us seven. So now I put seven and four, and then we see a two. So 11 subtract two will give us nine. So now we put two and nine, and then we move forward. And then here we get an eight. So now 11 subtract eight will give us three. So now we get three and eight, and then we have one. So 11 subtract one will give us 10. So now we have 10 and one. And then next we see nine. And then we notice in our dictionary, we've already seen the value nine. So basically we can just return the pairs nine and two, which represent the two values that add up to our target sum. And as you can see, all we did was loop through each number inside this list, which is basically big O of N. 
Isn't that amazing? We brought our solution from on squared all the way down to on log n just by sorting the input. And then we finally dropped it down to O of n just by using a dictionary. As you can see, data structures and algorithms is super important. And getting really good at this can definitely help you land a job. But what's more important is that your code will be more efficient, ultimately making you a better programmer. Now it's time to get coding. Cool. So this is what the final code looks like. First, we create a dictionary. Then we go through each number inside the list. And then we calculate the difference with target subtract the n value. And then we check if the n value is inside the dictionary. If it is, then we basically just return the number and also the value that adds up to the target. In the else case, we're just building up our dictionary with the values. So basically we use the difference value as a key inside the dictionary, which gives back the current n value. So just to give you guys an idea of what the dictionary looks like, let's add a print statement here and let's print out the dictionary. So let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got this dictionary, which basically matches up with this drawing that we have here. Cool. So for those of you that didn't solve the two sum question on leak code, we can basically just use this solution. So let's copy over the code and let's update list of numbers to match the parameter here. So let's copy nums and replace this with nums. And it looks like our spacing is off. That's why we have these pink highlights. So we can fix this by using backspaces like this. Cool. Now that looks better. So one thing I want to point out is that this question wants the indexes of the two numbers instead of the values. So we can fix this very easily. So we can wrap this nums inside an enumerate function. So we can do enumerate like this and wrap it. So basically this gives us access to an index variable. So now we have an index and an n value. So now instead of storing n here, we can just store the index. So let's paste it here and let's remove the print statement and now let's click run code. Yeah. It looks like our solution is wrong. Uh, so now looking at the code, it looks like we're also returning the n value here, but instead we want to return the index. So let's copy index and let's remove this. And now let's click run code again. Awesome. Looks like our code worked. Now let's click submit and see if it passed all the test cases. And there you go. We just solved our first leak code problem. Hopefully you learned something new and I'll see you in the next lesson.